Coach Sheldon Harrison. There never been no comparison. You're live on the show. Sit back and have a listen. All right, all right. LDBC, this is your boy Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Show, the Coach Show Live. Okay, guys. So I want to talk about this because, you know, some information has come out. And, you know, pretty much Deontay Wilder made a statement. Okay, now he's been real tight-lipped about this whole Wilder Fury 2 fight. He's been real tight-lipped. So, you know, I, I, I was kind of wondering, okay, when is he going to make a statement? Okay, so Deontay Wilder has said, that, hey, you know, I got a snake in my camp. We don't know who. Okay, he said that there's a snake in the camp. You know, somebody sold him out. And also he said that he's got proof that Tyson Fury used weights in that last fight. Okay, now none of these, you know, accusations have been substantiated. And, and I got to go ahead and say that right now. Nothing has been substantiated, okay? Nothing. Um, you know, we do know some things, but there's no proof that any of this has occurred. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my breakdown. Okay, first thing, I'm going to talk about the two trainers. Okay, I'm going to talk about these two guys. Okay, his trainers are Mark Breland and Jay Dees. Okay, now, you know, I'm going to start on Jay Dees. Guys, I, I don't know. I'm going to be real with y'all. Who the hell is this? What has this man done in boxing? Who the hell is this? You know, I didn't know a whole lot about this guy, and, and I did some research, and I'm like, wait a minute. This man ain't, ain't had an amateur fight. Okay, none that I can find. Now, I searched, and I couldn't find any, any record of this man having even one amateur fight, let alone a damn professional fight. Okay, and I started thinking to myself, how? Like, what does, what, what, what does this guy, you know, okay, and then I looked, and I said, okay, so JD's came into the game as a manager and a promoter. Okay, so I said that makes sense. Okay, that's Wilder manager. Okay, got it. Okay. So he's really not a trainer. But you know, Wilder at sometimes will say, hey, this is the head trainer. This is his head trainer. And when you see JD's actually on the mitts and the pads with Wilder, you know, I'm sitting here like, what the hell is this? What what, what is this? I mean, he just looked like a guy with pads on that's getting punched. And then they'd be talking about, well, my hands are hurting all the time and my body shots. Well, hell, why don't you try teaching them something? Have y'all ever heard this guy actually verbally communicate anything to Wilder, you know, to try to teach him anything? Like, guys, I'm sorry. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I think as a technical trainer, he sucks. I'm just being honest. Might sound negative, but he sucks. Do I think he could do something like this? Hell yeah, he could. But then I start thinking, okay, I saw an article with Jay Deese and Wilder in it. Hold on, I'm going to bring it up. Okay, here this article. Dees told Business Insider that he talks to Wilder regularly about how far they've come together from being completely broke when they first met in 2005 to headlining one of the boxing events of the year 15 years later. Wilder's journey has been remarkable from growing up in childhood poverty to buying a custom Rolls Royce SUV, his 11th car, which he keeps at a house he owns in Los Angeles. And then, you know, they say it's been a, uh, JD says it's been an amazing ride. I wouldn't change it for anything, Dees told us. And of course, neither they're assuming that Wilder would change anything too. Okay. So with that, you know, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, all right, okay, do we know for a fact, like, you know, it seems like him and Wilder were both, they ain't have nothing. JD started managing the guy, because I, th th look, man, this dude ain't no damn trainer. He sucks as a trainer. Th just say it. I know a lot of y'all been wanting to say it, but just don't want to say it. I'm going to say it for you. JD, nah, he, he ain't no head trainer. Okay, do I think he messed up his paper, his, his, his main source of income? I, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know. Okay. Now, somebody failed Wilder in this fight. Okay, somebody failed Deontay Wilder. I don't know if JD's will mess up his paper. Okay, I don't know. Now, do I think that if the price is right, could JD sell him out? Of course. Because you know why? Guys like JD's, they only care about money. Okay, hell, JD's ass wasn't throwing in no towel. And y'all know damn well this man was not going to throw in the towel. Come on, man. Come on. And he didn't throw the towel in. He ain't throw the towel in. Wilder told him, look, you throw that towel in, I'm going to fire you. So, JD's ain't throw that towel in. Y'all see he ain't do it. Okay, how do you explain this? Okay, I don't know though. I mean, I don't put it past JD though. I, I think he could do it. But this particular time, there's not enough evidence to support that he did anything. It's just not enough. So, I'm going to I'm gonna go on the side of, okay, JD's ain't going to mess up his paper. That's his top charge. You know, out of anybody, he made quite a bit of money, you know, from Deontay Wilder. So I would not think he would mess up his consistent paycheck. Okay? That's just me. Then we'll go over here to Mark Breland. 
Mark Breland, I'm going to tell y'all, they don't tell Mark Breland, shh. They don't tell him nothing. If y'all notice, man, when this man doing interviews, he can't speak on nothing like very detailed about, uh, about anything. He can't speak ab about a whole lot of stuff. Because they don't tell him nothing. Look, Mark Breland just in there, here, man, here. You show wild of this technical stuff, and, you know, that's it. And you keep your mouth shut. Well, he don't got to keep it shut, and they don't tell him nothing. They don't tell him nothing. And you can tell, man, like, I, I forgot who, who that asked him a question about something. And, uh, you know, like, Mark Breland was like, oh, okay, well, I ain't know that. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dude, ain't, ain't you in the camp with Wilder? What you mean you don't know? What you mean you don't know? No, they asked him about negotiations, man. That's what they asked him about. And he ain't know. And that's when he was about to fight Ortiz again for that second time. He ain't talking about, I don't know about negotiations. Most fighters, man, the trainers, they kind of know something about the negotiations. They know something. Now, they may not know all the intricate details, but they kind of know the status and the progress. And you can ask a, a good trainer that, and they can tell you, you know, at least give some feedback. This dude can't do that, man. Because they don't tell him nothing. Okay, now. People were saying, well, Mark Breland need the money. You know what? I started thinking, Mark Breland would sell out Wilder because he need the money. How do y'all know that? This, 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 this baffles me on, on, on the internet and YouTube. How, do, how the hell do y'all people know what's in a damn man's bank account? How, how, how do y'all know this? How? Please, please tell me. Well, you know, of course, me doing some research, Mark Breland got a net worth of $2 million. And moreover, you know what? This man getting residual income from movies he used to be in. This dude done played in movies. You know, I, I seen one of the movies he was in. I can't remember the movie. But uh, he done played in like four different movies, man. Four different movies. He done trained several fighters, man. The man has a net worth of two million. So uh, somebody with a net worth of, of two million, I don't think they're hurting for money too bad. But, you know, people want to put this narrative that Mark Breland, some, some homeless ass dude training Wilder, when this man, you know, is financially secure. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. People always trying to talk about was in people wallets, but you know, his bio, his bio, his discography, all that's online, okay? And it talks about what this man has been doing. World champ, you know, hey, is what it is. And you know what? He threw the towel in. This is what I don't understand, y'all. Okay, this the dude that he who was about to get fired. This the dude that's about to get fired. Okay, but he threw the towel in. See, Mark Breland is a fighter, and this is what I keep telling y'all about JD. JD's ain't no damn fighter. You can't, JD's can't look into a fighter's eyes and tell when a warrior is not there. He can't look in a, a fighter's eyes and be like, yo, he ain't there. Mark Breland, look, check Mark Breland out in round five. I mean, literally look at him in round five. You know, he looking in Wilder's face. He all, like, he looking like Mark Breland can see the champ is not there. Okay? And after round one, you know, Deontay Wilder really, you know, I'm like, God, dog. What is Wilder doing? He's sluggish? What the hell, man? What the dude? Is he high? That's what I'm thinking. Mark Breland saw that there was something wrong. So Mark Breland threw that towel in. I don't think Mark Breland would sell him out. Okay? Now, let's talk about, like, one of these two, though. Between him and then, you know, don't worry. I'm finna give some work to, uh, you know, Shelly Finkel, Lou DiBella. I'm finna give them some work, too. Uh, these two at the top, they, they seem like more... They stand a lot to lose if Wilder isn't successful. Now, Lou DiBella, Lou DiBella be on some old bush, okay? He be on that. Because, of course, he spoke out on the Devin Haney situation. But, of course, you know, he won't speak out on the Kovalev situation. Or, you know, he won't speak out on the Garcia situation. Or, you know, he don't speak out on anything else. He don't do any of that. Okay, nah. But he speak out on the Devin Haney situation. That's neither here nor there, okay? This dude right here, man, Lou DiBella, he just seemed kind of shady, man. He seemed real shady. Okay, and you know what? And, and one of these four people, oh, and let, let's not forget Shelly Finkel. You know, Shelly Finkel been around for decades, y'all. This man been around the sport of boxing. Look, he's on a higher echelon up there, like with Al Heyman, okay, Bob Arum, okay? Like, he's up there with those guys. And those guys, you, you got to understand, man, Al Heyman, Bob Arum, and Shelly Finkel, they've been around, man. These guys, they control boxing. It ain't Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn don't control boxing. Man, look, them guys, they look at Eddie Hearn and they laugh, okay? They, they look at Eddie Hearn and laugh. The bosses are these guys that's been around forever. Those are the bosses. They do what they want to do. Okay, they do what they want to do. They beat to their own tune. They beat to their own drums. Those are bosses. Shelly Finkel is a boss. Okay. 
with Shelly Finkel being such a boss, why in the hell did we not have somebody watching a Wilder back if there was an issue with the gloves? See, this is the part that pissed me off, okay? We got all these people right here around Wilder, and not one of these people can check to see if the damn gloves are legit. Didn't nobody see the glove flopping around? Could not any of these people in Wilder team figure out that something is wrong? Y'all couldn't see them damn gloves. And you know what? When they cut the camera off, I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. When they cut the camera off, was there somebody in that room? Okay. And then we talk about the, this, the Watergate, the, the water incidents. Okay. Well, who's in charge of Deontay Wilder's water? Why is he drinking water? How come nobody ain't bringing his water brought into him? Like, what? What? Come on, man. Come on. A fight of this magnitude. I, man, look, y'all can say y'all can hate Floyd Mayweather all y'all want to, but I'm gonna tell y'all, man. I remember Floyd Mayweather and Anthony Joshua was at some little event, man, and uh, some this this, this fine ass girl she brought Anthony Joshua a gift box. Floyd Mayweather he took that gift box, he took the gift box, opened it up, <laughs> and to see what was in that box before Anthony Joshua even did. I'm gonna tell you why. See, Floyd understands the game. I can guarantee you. That there's no way that Floyd Mayweather, that nobody would have got a bottle of water that's been drugged with Floyd Mayweather. Nah, they wouldn't have done that. And wouldn't nobody have been fighting with a pair of gloves, man, that's not properly fitted. Okay, it, j it just wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. One of these four, man, these guys, they failed Wilder. They failed him hard. And I'm talking about, man, Wilder need, and I hope he's taking a look at these four. Somebody got to go. Okay, somebody didn't do their damn job. Somebody effed it up. Okay? And part of, you know, yeah, you can say your Wilder didn't fight a good fight. You can say that. But if any if Wilder, if there's any if there's any validity to these accusations, if there's any validity to this, somebody got to go. Who would you trust? Who in the hell would you trust? It, it almost seemed like, man, when you get to the top, y'all, it's like you can't trust nobody. You can't trust the damn soul. I mean, you got all these people, they they talking. All they do is talk, 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 talk. And I'm talking about the people around Wilder. They talking, you know, they're, 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 they're doppelangers. They're straight doppelangers on Wilder's good success and fortune. Okay, I don't know. But these four people, <laughs> I hope he did some serious investigation. I hope he did. And I hope that what he's saying, you know, I hope that he can prove it. Because right now, it just seemed like somebody just made a statement and then everybody just going after it. So I kind of waited a few days. I kind of waited. I waited as long as I could. I waited to see, you know, like, okay, well, is he going to come out with the information or not? Okay, it's going to be a third fight. <laughs> okay, first we heard that, you know, Wilder took step aside money. Then we heard Wilder don't want the third fight no more. Okay, now this. Now we're hearing about this. Okay, now I'm kind of thinking, man, look, just forget it. Just go ahead. Fight the third time, okay? Fight the third time. Because I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I'm kind of tired of all the suspense. I'm tired of all this. It's kind of making me, honestly, not want to sit here and just commentate on boxing. Like, guys, this is this is, this is is probably better than any soap opera I've seen. Y'all remember soap operas used to come on back in the 90s and whatever? You know, this is a damn soap opera full of drama. A, a bunch of grown men. All these grown men and all this drama. Folks. I'm shaking my head right now. I'm a fight fan, and I'm shaking my head. I'm embarrassed. Guys, they, 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 this, this ain't going on in MMA. Guys, we just we get to see the fights. This ain't going on in MMA. What in the hell is wrong with boxing? What the hell, man? It take, it take, it take what, five years to make a, a legit fight? Fights get stalled out, okay? People get bought up, okay? Robberies. All kind of stuff. Now this brings me on to Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, guys, look. I don't care whether you like Fury or like Wilder or hate Wilder or like Fury. I don't care. Tyson Fury got a history of cheating. Okay? He got a history of cheating. And y'all need to go ahead and acknowledge that. If we gonna acknowledge that Wilder, he, he making accusations with no claims. Okay, listen. Listen to what I'm saying. If we're going to sit here and say Wilder is making accusations with no proof, then, okay, listen, I, okay, I, I'll take that. I'll take that. But we got to come on here and we got to say that Tyson Fury, okay, Tyson Fury, right here, okay, has a history of cheating. 
folks, that's just how it is. I mean, it's, it's several fights. It's several fights in several situations. Okay, yeah, this interview right here with Young Pharaoh, y'all remember this. And, uh, you know, he talked about, you know, how Tyson Fury took the pad and out the glove. And then there was also, you know, like a video with Nick Asbury. He actually showed Tyson Fury gloves and showed the pad and gone. And then, you know, showed his gloves where he had padding in it. Like, guys, and then also, what, uh, when Tyson Fury fought Christian Hammer, okay? I mean, let's talk about that fight, okay? Now, come on. Now, y'all see this? Okay, so, <laughs> how do you explain this? The referee already realized what no thumb in the glove. Hell, this has been going on for a long time, y'all. Look, man, look. The man got a history of cheating, okay? We can't deny that. Just like, you know, we can't sit here and say that Wilder got proof. The proof ain't substantiated. It, it, it's not there. Okay? The proof isn't substantiated. The accusations are not confirmed. So we can't really say I can give my thoughts as a fan and I'm going to do that. Okay? I thank Wilder telling the truth, but I got to wait for the proof. Okay? Y'all can say Wilder making claims, uh, unsubstantiated claims, and I'm going to agree with that. Yeah. But when we say that Tyson Fury got a history of cheating, you cannot sit back here and say that this man don't have a history of cheating. The man got a history of cheating, okay? It is what it is. Do I believe that Tyson Fury capable? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, he capable of putting egg weights in his hands. Now, how he did that, that's going to be the multi-million dollar question. How did he manage to sneak egg weights in his hands during a fight? How did he manage how did he get the weights in the gloves without nobody detecting it? If Tyson Fury, if they were able to have Deontay Wilder's water drugged, if they're able to, you know, if they're able to get egg weights in the gloves, then damn it, somebody need to get fired. Because I'm going to tell you, if I'm a fighter, then all this stuff happened to me on one night, I'm, I'm clearing, I'm cleaning the house. Everybody gone. Everybody gone. And I'm going to get me a team that's going to, that's going to look out for my best interests. I'm going to get a team that's going to do it, man. Okay, everybody out of here. And you got Sugar Hill. Hell, I don't even know what Sugar Hill role in this, okay? I mean, did Sugar Hill know about the cheating? Hell, we, we'll never know. It'll just be, it'll just be like speculation. It'll be high, heavy speculation. We have no idea if Sugar Hill even knew what the hell was going on. We don't know, okay? I mean, he looks suspicious. I can say he looks suspicious, but hell, do we even know? I mean, for all we know, Sugar Hill, hey, look, <laughs> you know, they trying to make his money, just like JD's, Mark Breland, all these people. All these people want to make their money. But if Sugar Hill actually knew something about this, and if Sugar Hill actually condoned this and actually assisted with this, all of these bastards need to be banned for life. Every last one of them. They need to be gone. They need to get them out of the sport, man. That's why the sport of boxing is so messed up, man. That's why boxing sucks. It ain't nobody. You can do whatever you want in boxing, pretty much. It's a free fall. You ain't really got to follow no guidelines. What guidelines do you have to follow? Oh, oh, wait a minute. You talking about the governing body guidelines? The guidelines that fighters be saying uh, they stick their middle finger up at that? Y'all talking about those guidelines? Yeah, okay, yeah. Talking about the guidelines when they order you to take a fight. People be like, Psh, I ain't fighting him. I'll fight who the hell I want to fight. Those guidelines? Yeah. Yep. That's the boxing commission that, you know, we have got. There are no guidelines in boxing. You got a handful of guys that run boxing. Shelly Finkel is one of them. Okay, Shelly Finkel is one. Al Heyman is another. Bob Arum is another one. Okay. Richard Schaefer. People, Richard Schaefer is a guy behind the scenes. Richard Schaefer do. Oscar De La Hoya before he got all coked out. But Oscar De La Hoya's influence is starting to grow now. Along with the fishnet pantyhose, uh, you know, photos. But subject for another video. His influence is starting to, you know, grow again. I mean, these people, they control boxing. Okay, a handful of guys, they make the rules for boxing. And if you don't play by those rules, then you don't make paydays. You don't get fights. That's just how it is. Everybody on down from the referees and the judges. Why? You know why I can say this? Because this has been going on in boxing for years. Referees and judges, they, they look, man, them getting paid off, them going to, to, to promotional dinners, them getting the envelopes full of money. Guys, this stuff has already been, it, it's been, it's been proven. Okay? The whole sport of boxing need a damn overhaul, man. It do, man. It's just, it's, it's a lot of stuff. And it, it kind of make it difficult to get on here and talk boxing. And really, really want to give your, uh, like your heart and passion into it. Because this is what you get. Y'all buckle up. Fight three is going to happen. While they're in ducking a fade. And Tyson Fury, it, 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 look, we get ready for fight three. Man, I'm done with this.